instead of chasing after because I know I've told people over and over and over, don't call out, don't whistle, you know, whatever. And they still do it. Yeah. And then this poor pet just keeps running and you never find it, you know, and that's happened to us. It's happened, you know, and I know it's happened and it's so sad because they don't listen to the advice that, you know, comes from years of experience, you know, right. It's tried and true. You cannot catch a pet by screaming and yelling and chasing and whistling after it when it's already terrified. So exactly. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, owners just feel like, well, my pet will know me and come to me. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's just not the case. You know, they depend they've gone into some survival mode. They just, they're trying to stay safe. And so even if this is your dog that loves you more than anything, that they're not going to necessarily come to you when you call when they're in that situation. Yeah. And if people would just um, listen to that. And and one of the most interesting things I find sometimes is watching the videos of a long lost reunion or even not that long but most of the time it's been weeks or something and you see a reunion online you know like on that dodo site or whatever yeah you know (laughs) and they post a lot of those and it's really really interesting to watch a dog get reunited with their owner and it's like they don't even recognize them they don't know who they are even yeah. if they're speaking to them until they smell them, you know, so it's very interesting that people acknowledge the fact that maybe their pet does love them, but it, it gets into a state of mind that it, it just, you know, it is like, it is survival mode and it's just, um, something that happens to them, you know, yeah. and there's, there's no doubt about it. And and that is the classic example to me, watching these pets that, don't recognize the person. And then all of a sudden, as they get closer and they smell them, then they're like, that's my person. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And then, you know, with cats, it's completely because cats are just like hunker down and hide. Um, So definitely out, you know, beating the bushes, yelling, shaking the treat bag, um, which I know a lot of people do that when they lose their cat, they're out yelling and they've got treats and catnip and, um, yeah, they're just not going to respond to that. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we talk about these things over and over and over again, but I know that we don't always have the same listeners. And, and um, so it's really, really important. I know last year we did a 4th of July show, but this one really, to me, you know, you just had everything, bam, 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 bam. <laughs> um <laughs> You know, it makes a lot of sense for people to hopefully listen to this and really grasp the concept, you know, because we can't stress it enough because you do what you do. I do what I do. And um, we do see, you know, Fourth of July night for the next day. Yeah. It's just let's reunite the pets. Let's find the pets. Where are the pets? You know, where they go? Exactly. It's, it's really a sad situation. Um, when you're trying to find them and, and help them get back home. And so it is everyone's responsibility. Like you said, microchip them, make sure they're wearing their ID tags. If you don't have it and in a pinch, write it on their collar, do whatever you have to do to keep your pets safe. Yeah, exactly. And just, you know, again, keep them inside. The 4th Mm -hmm. of July is really just not, it's no place to be taking Mm -hmm. your pets. No, it's a good idea to walk them early, get them tired out, you know, right. Get, get them all hunkered down somewhere where it's nice and quiet and safe and hope for the best that the kids out the street aren't cracking those fireworks all night long. Right. Um, well, it kind of terrifies me. I can't even I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and I understand I it. <laughs> I know. One thing I do want to talk a little bit more about, because you brought this point up and um, this is so important. You said going to the shelter in person. And one of the reasons besides, you know, how busy it is, is because when people report um, their pet, to them, they see this pet every day and they might call it, you know, a certain color or a certain description. But a shelter employee may just call this pet something 
totally different. And so in their database, if you call in and you say, oh, this is my pet, dot, 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 this is what it is. And then they look, no, I'm sorry, we don't have that pet here. When it is really there, but they've called it something completely different. And sometimes, you know, mistakes happen and it's put down as a male and it's really a female. So right. stressing that point, go in person, cannot be stressed enough. Yeah, absolutely. And ask to see all the pets on every, every cage, every hallway, ask to see everything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because they're busy, you know, and many times they're, they're overworked. I, you know, they're, they're working as hard as they can. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, you need to really go in person. Yeah. And sometimes those emails, the pictures, you know, they can't look at every email. They don't have time to look at every email. And sometimes the pictures aren't great. And yeah. like you said, they've identified that pet as something completely different. Um, yeah. So going in and looking for yourself is the best way to ensure that you get your pet back. Right. Yep. Just being prepared, you know, everyone, uh, what is it? July is National Lost Pet Prevention Month. So all of the tips that you mentioned here are for, for throughout the year, you know, whether it be Christmas or, you know, Thanksgiving or Easter or whatever, you've got people coming and going birthday parties, always be prepared for your pets. And, you know, in the event that an emergency like you know, they run out the door or something scares them off. You're always ready and you always know what to do. Right. Right. Yeah. Being prepared in advance is definitely the key. Um, having all of that information, your ownership documents, everything that you may need. Um, that is definitely the key. Mm -hmm. Now, is there anything that um, you'd like to mention that we haven't already talked about? Well, just, you know, like you, we've already said, I think getting um, your information, if you do lose a pet, um, being able to get that in a national database, like the Pet FBI database that, you know, we share with our partners um, that gets that information in there. Social media is wonderful, um, but if a post on Facebook is not easily searchable, so having your information in a database where anybody can go back and search and can filter by date or pet species or location is really the most helpful thing. Um, if you've ever tried to search for a particular post on Facebook, you know how frustrating it can be. And you're like, oh, I know I saw that dog somewhere, um, but I can't remember what page. Uh, so having all of the information in one place um, is really that's what we have been working toward and we're very excited that we're getting to that point and so we just really want to encourage everybody to use that yeah and leslie will be with me uh next week to talk about that collaboration with helping lost pets and with the lost dogs of america organization and how together the three groups are going to you know create this hopefully one centralized database that will help all of the people that have lost their pets, um, you know, find it easier to get reunited with them. Yep. I am looking forward to talking about that. Okay. Um, so as we end the show, would you like to tell everybody how they find your webpage or your Facebook page? Yeah, absolutely. Just go to petfbi.org. And that is our website. You will see very clearly at the top of the page. You can search reports or post reports. We also have lots of tips and information um, that you can go through if you, um, if you have lost a pet or if you found a pet. We have lots of advice on the page at petfbi.org. Okay, great. Leslie, I'm, I'm really glad you were here with us today and the tips that we've talked about for uh, 4th of July safety and um, – you know, as we said, just safety throughout the year and being prepared are so important. So, um, again, everybody, this has been Leslie Poole. She's the executive director of Pet FBI, which is a nonprofit organization. And your 
welcome to go on their page and donate to their cause. Oh, thank you. What they what they do really <laughs> helps reunite lost pets with their owners. And we'll be talking with her again next week as we talk about how they've joined forces with um, the Lost Dogs of America organization. And I know you're all familiar with that and helping lost pets, which is, you know, the, the organization that Lost Dogs of America has always been partnered with that creates the flyers and the mapping system. And so it's really, it's really quite, um, quite interesting that everyone here is joining forces together. I knew I did an interview with um, Dubert, the Dubert group, Chris Roy, and he, and he brought this to my attention months ago that this was in the works. So I'm really excited about it and looking forward to talking some more with you about it. Great. I am looking forward to it as well. And thank you so much for letting me talk a little bit today about uh, July 4th safety. Sure. No problem. So until next time, everybody, remember 4th of July is this week. I want everybody to, you know, microchip your pets, put your tags on, make sure you've secured your pet, take it out before the festivities, be aware of the week before the days before the days after that this is a scary time of the year for our lost pets and one of the busiest of the year for them so please be prepared so until next time everyone remember that a lost pet can't tell anyone where it lives so please be sure your pet is microchipped and wearing its id tags every single day and if that pet is microchipped Call your microchip company. Make sure that information is updated and registered properly. We can't stress that enough. I'm your host, Patty Giarusso, and this has been Let's Talk Pets on Society Bites Radio. Thanks for joining us today, and until next time, take care and keep your pets safe.